Welcome to the Ideal Investor Show. This is the podcast where we help you challenge your mindset and discover where you are. Tired of stories about other people's success? We can help you change your life, determine your time freedom point and join us on the journey to financial success. Let's go. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ideal Investor Show and today I like to reference something that I saw in an article and you know in these audio episodes I'm always trying to have some current information that is related to residential real estate investing because I feel that I have the duty to inform you whether you are an existing mentoring client or if you're contemplating investing in residential real estate or you're following us on Substack. So one of the things that has occurred recently, and it has occurred in my portfolio and anybody who is listening to us and has been looking at their own portfolio of investment properties is that the expenses seem to go up. And I want to address a little bit, what can we actually do about it? And how much can we do about it? So the three areas that I've identified for you where I would say keep a closer eye on it, insurance premiums, property taxes, and maintenance bills. And for the maintenance bills, it's relatively easy to keep an eye on it because obviously you are one of those really good investors that follow our approach, which means you work with turnkey providers who also have property management as part of the deal. And as good property managers, they inform you because you have your monthly call for like 15, 20 minutes to check in about your properties under management with that property management company. That is also part of the turnkey provider. And they're going to tell you, hey, we got a report from the tenant that this is wrong or that is wrong. And then uh, if it's a small thing, they may have already fixed it by the time you talk to them. If it's a bigger thing, they obviously have to ask you for permission to spend money from your account or you to send them money to spend to fix anything. So those maintenance bills are the ones that you can see a little easier. But one thing I want to point out, and it is super, super annoying me, is that the fees with the whole pandemic stuff and so forth that regular, you know, like a plumber, an electrician, somebody who is doing roofing or windows or stuff like that, it has really gotten excruciatingly expensive. So one thing I want to tell you as an option to consider and also talk to your property management company about that is if you or they would be willing to basically work with a handyman. And I have done this with one of my properties in the very early stages of my investing career when I had a property in California that used to be our primary residence and then we converted it into an investment property. And so we actually found a handyman who was serving that little town. I mean, you know, there were more than him, but he was doing it and he at the time charged $45. And I'm sure nowadays he's probably charging $55 or $65 an hour. But when I look at the maintenance bills that I'm seeing, where the material costs and their rates are actually shown, it is not uncommon that we had like something like $40, $50, $60, $70 dollars of materials and then 120 or 170 or 180 dollars in hourly rates and and you know driving there and appearance fees and stuff so lately almost every maintenance call has turned out to be a 250 dollar expense and yes you might say well that's what it costs in my community too if i call a plumber or stuff like that but the problem is that our properties were originally calculated to have, in the beginning at least, somewhere between 150 and 250 maybe sometimes $300 in positive cash flow. And that means every time something is to be repaired in your property, assuming that you have to pay 250 bucks, that means a month's worth of, of positive cash flow is gone. And if that happens once a year, it's maybe not that big a deal. But obviously, we are in these properties, we own these properties because we want to generate positive cash flow and not give it away to plumbers and electricians. So that's something to keep an eye on and to talk to your property managers about is check your maintenance bills and see if there's an option to work with a good handyman who does good work, but for a much more reasonable price. The other two are much harder to find because they don't occur quite as frequently and in my opinion they kind of sneak up on you so there was a recent survey for residential real estate investors and the company that did the survey asked what are the things that you have seen that have gone up the most in cost 
and not by how much did they go up, but what of the different things that generate costs in a residential real estate investing has gone up the most. And the majority of the people that responded to the survey were saying the thing that went up the most were insurance premiums. And I can attest to that my insurance premiums have gone up. The other thing that has also gone up, and so 50% of the people asked said the number one thing went up were insurance premiums, and 27% of the people asked the number one thing was property tax. Now, for somebody who says property taxes were my number one thing, that doesn't mean that their insurance didn't go up. It was just not their number one thing. Right, so I want to clarify that. But what it means, those two things, insurance premiums and property taxes, and the way they sneak up on you is that most of us, if you follow our approach, you would have a mortgage that covers the insurance and the property taxes as part of the escrow amount. So all year long, you're paying, say, $625 into the mortgage, and a certain part of those $625 is going to pay the insurance once a year and the property taxes twice a year. So if property taxes go up 10%, you only find out when you get a notification from your mortgage company that your monthly payment goes up from, uh, let's say, $650 to $700. And you're asking yourself, wow, why is it going up 50 bucks a month? right? And so why am I bringing this up? Because the question is, how do you react to that? And it really depends a little bit on how much is the increase. Now, I just used the example to say, okay, it was 650 a month, and now you get a notification it will be 700 a month. You can definitely increase the rent by $50, and that would probably be seen as reasonable, right? Now, if your increase went from $650 to $750, you have to ask yourself, can you really increase the rent by $100 a month, or will that cause your tenant to say, hey, that's too much the economy is not doing well, I don't have much money, everything else got more expensive. If you make me pay a hundred extra dollars a month, I might have to move out. And that is an important consideration to have the conversation and obviously your property managers have to have that conversation with your tenants to say, okay, well, you want to approach them and whatever the number is, is it $50, $75, $100 and see if the tenants can handle it. But if the tenants say, no, that's too much, you want to be prepared and you want to negotiate this with your property managers to say, okay, the minimum that I need to get is $50 or $60 or something like that. But we have to be aware now that with these massive increases in insurance premiums and property taxes, that we might have a situation that we cannot get 100% of that back through rent. And I totally know that that is hurting us because we are obviously doing most of these investments for long-term positive cash flow and good performance. But I think part of it is also that if you did any of these investments recently, let's say in the last two years, you probably have interest rates in your mortgages that in the next three years, I would say, at some point we will get back to interest rates where it's worth refinancing and that will give you a good chunk of po uh, positive cash flow back again. But it is definitely painful to see that insurance premiums and property taxes have been going up together with the maintenance costs going up so much. And we have to be careful, I'm saying this more in a big picture view, that a situation doesn't evolve where regular, relatively small investors like you and me come to the conclusion that we just can't make enough money because you, our approach to say, when do we even start looking at a property is always when they meet the 1% rule. But if the expenses go up further and further and further, the 1% rule may not be enough anymore. Right now, it should still be fine. If you really run a deal through the calculator, you should still be fine meeting the 1% rule. But if these increases keep happening, and the, basically the ratio between how many expenses do we have for the mortgage, for the insurance, for the maintenance and so forth is going up too much, then there is no positive cash flow left anymore. And we should never really get into a deal or maintain a deal where we can't at least make $200. Right. So that's something really to keep an eye on. I don't want to scare anybody. I just want you to be aware that this is happening and that you should keep an eye on your mortgage statement so you don't get surprised. Now, this is just one little kind of like tip of the iceberg type topic 
that we are regularly addressing when we're working with clients also to find out what is a good next investment that we want to go after. And so those kind of things need to be talked about. And that's why I'm always saying, I want you as a listener to take action and in multiple different way. One action I really like to ask you to do is to download this episode and give it a rating for the show because that really helps us to make this podcast more successful. But for yourself, from an investing perspective, if you aren't already an investor, but you think this would be a good opportunity to consider working with us, I would really like to ask you to go to idealinvestorshow.com and find the button to book a call so that we can have a conversation, right? Because I really want you to get into our mentorship program and that is just happens to be the first step. So that's it for today. Be well and stay safe and I'll talk to you tomorrow.